We welcome you to Durham, North Carolina. It is ACC College softball action. Third and final game of the series, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish are in town to take on the Duke Blue Devils. Jayla Wright made appearances both Friday and Saturday in the relief position. She's the veteran in this bullpen for this Duke team. Look to see her have a huge day. 47 strikeouts in 41 innings pitch. Anytime you can get the one-to-one -one ratio or better, you're doing really well. She's going to work in the upper 60s. She's going to attack hitters and hopefully immobilize this Notre Dame offense if you're the Duke team. So it's Duke and Notre Dame in game three in the final game of this three-game weekend series. And the opening pitch of the game from right is a called strike. And it is nothing in one on Leah Hanks. As we take a look at the Fighting Irish batting order, Leah Hanks leading it off, followed by Klaus Gaskins, Lexia Roscoe batting cleanup. Then it's Cronenberger, Tid, Mitchell, Allen, and Mickey Windchill. Next pitch is fouled away and quickly Hanks is down in the count. Nothing in two. Hanks batting 4-17 on the year through seven games. No home runs and one RBI of the year. Yeah, the only change for this Notre Dame lineup, Coach Deanna Gump moving Cronenberger down in the lineup a little bit, moving Gaskins up in the third spot. Hopefully making a good offensive move. But Jayla Wright starting it off with a strikeout in three pitches. So one up, one down for Notre Dame at the top of the first inning. And that'll bring up the second hitter in the lineup, the catcher, Carly Kloss. She's batting 321 for the season through 16 games, all starts. Two home runs and 10 RBIs on the year. And that's high for ball one. Kloss. For the series, three for eight, has a run scored, stole a base. She has struck out four times so far this weekend. Yeah, she's done a really good job this weekend of putting the ball in play. I think she's gonna continue to be a really important piece of this Notre Dame lineup if she's able to pass the bat to the likes of Gaskins and Orozco, who have been their, their power hitters this weekend and all season. So Kloss hit the plate, 5'8", junior from Cypress, California. Last year played in 35 games and made 25 starts, primarily behind the plate, starting catcher here today as well. And that's chopped foul. Two balls and one strike. These game three matchups in the ACC and all across the country are really interesting for a number of reasons, but you look at the offenses. They've seen these pitchers all weekend. It's really about the team that makes the most adjustments, pitch to pitch, game to game, that will come out successfully in these rubber matches. That's inside. Three balls and one strike. So Jayla Wright in the circle, pitching in her third game of the series. Pitched on Friday in relief, went three and a third innings, allowed one run, two hits, 64 total pitches. Yesterday, pitched two innings in relief, gave up no runs, one hit, walked one, two strikeouts, 30 total pitches so far in that game uh, and for the weekend. That one's chopped foul. And the count is full on Kloss at three balls and two strikes. Uh, right in the circle, throws between 67 and 70 miles an hour, according to head coach uh, Marissa Young. Fastball, drop ball, changeup is her repertoire this year. The 3-2. Low for ball four, and Kloss is over at first base. And the head coach of Notre Dame is Deanna Gumpf. Deanna Gump has been a mainstay in this Notre Dame program for 22 seasons made an NCAA tournament in every single season. Can't understate how difficult that is to produce a quality team year after year with no lulls. She's so good at what she does. And talking to her before this matchup, she said she would never coach anywhere else. Notre Dame is home for her, and she's built a legacy with the Fighting Irish. Yeah, over 800 career wins at Notre Dame. As a son who's a junior at Notre Dame, plays on the Fighting Irish baseball team, Coach Gumpf, seven Big East regular season championships, four Big East tournament championships, now going for an ACC title. 
She played softball at Nebraska for four years from 1989 through 1992. Karina Gaskins is the hitter. Batting 286, three home runs, eight RBIs on the air. There's a swing and a miss. And down she goes on strikes. And two outs in the inning for Notre Dame. Yeah, really well executed pitch there by Jayla Wright. 0 2, you're ahead in the count. You want to work outside the zone. She's going to pull a string on the off speed, make Gaskins chase. For Gaskins, as soon as you realize that ball is out of the zone, it is too late. And that is how effective Jayla Wright can be when she changes speeds and works out of the zone. Here's Lexi Orozco, the cleanup hitter, takes a called strike. No balls and one strike to Orozco, batting 292 for the year through 16 games, all starts. Four home runs and 14 RBIs in the year. She's a transfer from Utah State. Six feet tall, grad student from San Marcos, California, takes a called strike, and she's quickly down to the count, nothing in two. Yeah, anytime you can get ahead of a good hitter in a Rose Co., that's a positive sign for your pitching staff. That's a positive sign for Jayla Wright. Rose Co. not agreeing with either of those calls, I believe, but she is a hitter that can fight in these situations. Swing and a miss, and down she goes on strikes. And the inning is over as Jayla Wright strikes out the side in the top of the first inning. Yeah, Jayla Wright working off the plate again, using the drop ball, striking out. The starting pitcher in the circle today for Notre Dame is number 14, Peyton Tidd. She was the winning pitcher on Friday in the win over Duke. Here's a look at the resume for Peyton Tidd, and she's already put up some pretty impressive numbers. Yeah, Peyton Did Tidd has had a great season so far. She is, like I've mentioned before, the veteran in the bullpen for the Fighting Irish. Works the ball in the mid to low 60s, has a really good off speed, and she changes eye levels, which will be huge in this Game 3 matchup against Duke. Deja Davis swings and fouls the first pitch off that she sees for a strike. No balls and one strike to Davis, batting 435 for the season. No homers and nine RBIs. She leads it off. Jennings batting second, followed by Tapia on a gold batting cleanup. Then it's Davidson, Vega, Freelich, Baker, and Sarah Goddard is batting ninth. Yeah, looking at the series versus Notre Dame, seven for 25 with runners in scoring position leaving 14 runners on base. You know this Duke offense wants to improve upon those numbers today. Just situationally need to be a little bit more effective. But Deja Davis, three for four versus Notre Dame, two doubles, two RBIs. She's so good at what she does and she's been really good this weekend as well. Yeah, three for four in the series. Couple of doubles, as you mentioned, couple of runs scored, couple of runs driven in. Five, six grad student from Cerritos, California. Last year played in all 45 games that she was able to play and made 33 starts. Yeah, Deja has battled health problems, but such a tough player for this team. Pops one up and the third baseman, Jolie Mitchell in foul grounds makes the catch and there's one away in the Duke bottom of the first inning. Yeah, what a well-executed pitch here by Tid Mitchell with a great play. To get that first out is so critical against this two team, but especially to get Deja Davis out. Anytime she gets on base, chaos ensues. So to get that first out is huge and critical in this game. So one up and one down in the Duke first inning. And the batter now, Deanna. Jennings and takes one high and outside for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Jennings batting 408. 19 games played, 18 starts. No homers and five RBIs on the year. In the series so far this weekend, she is one for four. And slaps one the opposite way, foul. 
And it's one ball, one strike with nobody on, one out for Duke. Jennings at the plate, five six freshman from Houston. And Coach Marissa Young said before the game, she's just a young player that has a ton of speed, good at slap hitting with the short game, confident player. There's Marissa Young, head coach of Duke, coaching at the third base box as well. Hit to third, Mitchell is there, quick throw and quickly two gone in the Duke first inning. And you played for Coach Young back in the day. Absolutely, I was lucky enough to play under Coach Marissa Young, her sixth season at the helm of this Duke program. No head coach, I would argue, or maybe very few work as hard as she has. I mean, we t I told this story on Friday. She's the type of coach that you walk into the facility, she's already there, she's sweeping the floors, she's vacuuming the carpets. She really practices what she preaches. Such a good leader for this Duke program in this university. Giselle Tapia is the batter and takes a called strike. Tapia batting 396. One home run, 17 RBIs on the year. In the series this weekend, she is two for six, has a triple, an RBI, and walked once. Oh, one. And that's downstairs. One ball, one strike. Peyton Tidd is the pitcher. A two-way player for this team. She will throw both up and down in the zone, according to Coach Gump. Fastball runs between 62 and 64 miles an hour. Off-speed pitches run between 52 and 57 miles per hour. Nobody on, two out, 1-1, one, one, and that's upstairs. What's impressed you most about Peyton Tidd so far this weekend, especially on Friday? She has been so impressive at being able to spot the pitches she wants to spot. And I look at these lefty matchups for Peyton Tidd, her ability to start on the outside part of the plate and then expand as she gets deeper into counts with these hitters. I think that's going to be the matchup that we'll see throughout this entire game. And her ability to, to elevate her pitches too, I think that's going to be the matchup. That's going to be the duel that will decide who wins this game is can Duke get on top of that pitch? Can they make the adjustment? Can the lefties hit that ball through the 5-6 hole? Or is Tid just good enough to work that outside part of the plate, mix in her off speed, and keep these hitters off balance? 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss, and down she goes on strikes. First strike out of the game for Davidson, Jennings, and Goddard. Around the infield, Gold is at third, Baker at short, Vega at second base. Tapia is at first, Francesca Freelich is behind the plate, and Jayla Wright is in the circle. Three and two record, 2.05 ERA. She will face Cronenberger, Tid, and Mitchell here in the top of the second, and Cronenberger fouls one off for strike one. No balls and one strike to Jane Cronenberger, batting 321 through 16 games, all starts. Two home runs and nine RBIs on the year. Hits one sharply to short. Nice backhand by Baker over to first in time. Pretty play. And there's one away in the Notre Dame second. What a great play there by Baker. To get that first out of the inning is always important. But Cronenberger, a shot over there to the shortstop who makes the play. Cronenberger, a powerful hitter. Just hasn't hit her stride this weekend, but look for her later in this game as an important bat in this Notre Dame lineup. So Jayla Wright in the circle will face her counterpart in Peyton Tidd to a player. It's one right to third. Gold is there. Easy throw. And there are quickly two down in the Notre Dame second inning. Yeah, both these pitchers, Jayla Wright and Peyton Tidd, filling up the zone early. Both offenses aggressive early on. We're through one and two thirds, and it's been, I feel like, seven minutes or so. <laughs> it's been moving. Uh, there is uh, Jayla Wright, starting pitcher for Duke today. Wright throws between 67 and 70 miles an hour. Really brings the heat for this team in the circle. Throws a fastball, drop ball, and a changeup. Been working on a rise ball. But uh, Rain throwing 67 to 70, that's bringing the heat. That is bringing the heat. She throws really hard. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday. 
but what makes her so good, there's a number of things that make her really good, but her ability to work that change up and have it be the same eyesight for the hitter. Coming out of the hand, it looks like it's going to be that 68 mile per hour drop ball, but oh, by the way, it's 10 miles per hour slower. Jolie Mitchell, the batter, she's down to the count, nothing in two. Batting 186 on the year, hits one softly to second. Vega is there, easy throw. Three ground ball outs for Jayla Wright and Duke defensively in the top of the second. We go to the bottom of the second, we have Anna Gold will lead things off here for Duke in the bottom of the second inning and Rain, she had a great performance yesterday afternoon. Yeah, you gotta be careful with this one today. Yesterday, two two-run bombs for the Duke Blue Devils. Gold, so much power, so much skill. She'll be, she'll be a really important component of this Duke offense today. I know Notre Dame was gonna be careful knowing how hot that bat is right now. So Gold at the plate to lead things off here for Duke at the bottom of the second inning as Gold takes a called strike. Uh, Anna Gold batting 357 through 20 games, all starts, four homers, 20 RBIs on the year. 5'7 sophomore from Boston Spa, New York. For the series, two for five. Both hits homers, we talked about it a moment ago. Four RBIs, five runs scored. She has walked twice and she has struck out once. Hits it hard to third. Great backhand by Mitchell over the first in time. One out here in the Duke second. What a play over there at the hot corner. Mitchell has been busy early on. Takes this ball up the line, quickly backhands it. Fires over to first. Gold with some speed. Such a huge out early on. Anytime you can get that first out, the stats are in your favor to get to have a clean inning and especially to get on a gold out. Such a confidence boost for this Notre Dame team and Peyton Tidd. Yeah, the infielders for both teams, especially at the hot corner, have been <laughs> very, very busy, busy here this afternoon as Peyton Tidd uh, throws a strike. No balls and one strike to Claire Davidson. She's batting 333 for the year. Three home runs and 14 RBIs on the season. The 0-1 upstairs, one ball, one strike. And what makes that play so impressive over there is she's Mitchell's actually playing a little bit in front of the bag to prevent that drop bunt. Anna Gold will oftentimes put that bunt down, so just really quick reaction time. There you see the defensive alignment for Notre Dame here in this game. Third and final game of the series, rubber game of the series, as Notre Dame took game one on Friday, five to four. Duke won yesterday, six to two. It's the ACC opening weekend for both teams, and you got to feel that, uh, Rain, each team wants to get out to a good start here in ACC play and win this first series of the year. Absolutely, and the series, I believe, is tied throughout their both of their teams' histories together. You could throw out the rankings, you could throw out the records. This is always a fun matchup. And Davidson loops one into right center field for the first hit of the game for Duke here on the afternoon. And she is on board with one out here in the bottom of the second inning. Yeah, Claire Davidson just gonna stay in her legs on this off speed, throw the barrel out and do what she does best, barrel balls hard into the right center gap to get this Duke offense started. First hit of the day for either team, one on and one out for Duke. Here in the bottom of the second inning, brings up Amina Vega, batting 304. No home runs, 11 RBIs on the year. 20 games, 19 starts for the Blue Devils and Wax that one foul back to the screen for strike one. Uh, Vega, 5-7, and a freshman from DeBerry, Florida. In the series, she is one for five. She has struck out twice. Yeah, Vega is a player that will continue to be a name for this Duke softball program for years to come. So much talent playing on the Puerto Rican national team was highly touted coming out of high school. Yeah, Coach Marissa Young says she's an up-and-coming player, just a freshman, good athlete. Says she continues to improve every day. And says the potential for power is there in her bat. She's been a good a nine-hole hitter for this team so far. Good addition to this Duke team here in 2023. One on, one out, and the one one pitch off speed. Delay, steal attempt, and throw down to second base, and they got her. Caught stealing was Davidson. 
And she's out for the second out of the inning. Wow, what a play all around by this Notre Dame defense. Kloss, even with a little hesitation, Davidson gets a good jump. Orozco catches the ball immediately, has a cleat in her glove, but hangs on for the out. Shaking the wrist a little bit, but I'm sure she'll exchange that for an out. So now base is empty and two outs in the inning. And the 2-1 to Vega. And pops that one foul out of play. And the count is even up at two balls and two strikes. Beautiful day for softball here in Durham, North Carolina. Sunny. Temperatures, I think when we got here, uh, high 60s. Yeah, what a beautiful, beautiful day. Yeah, beautiful. I feel like winter just skipped over the triangle here in Durham, North Carolina. And we're okay with that. We are okay with that. <laughs> we're very happy about that. 2-2 two -two upstairs. And it's three balls and two strikes. Peyton Tidd in the circle for Notre Dame. Last year named to the second team all ACC team. Led the Irish last year with 32 appearances in the circle through 130 innings. Had a 15 and five record last year. This year, six and two, 2.23 ERA, 3-2 pitch. And that's fouled away by Vega. And stays alive in the count at three and two. Yeah, during my career, I had, I don't want to say the privilege of facing Tid because I don't think I got a hit off her ever. <laughs> but having the experience of being in the box against Peyton Tid, a veteran, she's so good at mixing speeds, keeping you off balance. 3-2, that is lined to center right at Hanks, and the inning is over. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left on base. After two complete, we have no score. Is out of the game here today, and in for her behind the plate is Francesca Freelich. Yeah, these two will split time behind the plate. Of course, you don't want to see Torres get injured. You don't want to see her go out with that kind of injury, of course. But you know, talking to Coach Young before this series, she mentioned how she has the ability to play people based on how they're hitting because they're defensively, Francesca Freelich and Kelly Torres are so evenly matched, they're so good. You know, I talked to Kelly before the game, she wanted to play, but it's so early in the season, you wanna prioritize her health. It's a long season to go. And you want her at her best in May and June. And not to mention you have a player like Francesca Freelich, who is so good behind the plate, is so good offensively, has been playing this entire series in right field. Rachel Allen, the batter, a little soft. Softly hit ball, rolls foul down the third base line, and she stays alive in the count, uh, nothing in two. Uh, Allen at the plate, to batting 250. She's played in 12 games, 10 starts, one home run, four RBIs. As she faces Jayla Wright here to begin the top of the third inning. 5'6", sophomore from Palos Verdes, California. For the series, she is one for four. Swing and a miss for strike three. Down goes Allen, out number one in the inning, and strikeout number four in the game for Jayla Wright. Yeah, Jayla Wright not wasting any time on that 0-2 count, working the off speed down in the zone, making these Notre Dame hitters chase. If she's able to do that all game, get ahead and then use that off speed, especially locating it where hitters really can't do any damage. She'll be very successful. The number nine hitter is up there, Mickey Winchell. She fouls off the first pitch for strike one. Uh, Winchell, freshman, left fielder, batting 361 for the season. No home runs and five RBIs. 5'8 freshman from Livermore, California. She only played on Friday, did not play Saturday. In Friday's game, she went 0 for 3 at the plate. And chops that one foul. And she's quickly down to the count, nothing in two to Jayla Wright. Uh, two years ago, Wright pitched at Michigan State. Now she's a Duke Blue Devil. 
pitching for Duke here today in the third and final game of this three-game weekend series. Rubber game of the series, and that pitch outside just missed for ball one. Yeah, Jayla Wright again in these 0-2 counts, able to get ahead. And with a pitcher like her, if you're able to get ahead, able to get in these 0-2, 1-2 counts, the ball is in your court. You can throw the off speed, you can work off the plate, you can work on that upper level pitch. Right to first, there is Tapia. Quickly two down in the inning. Yeah, these infields have been busy so far here in Durham. A lot of ground balls. A lot of quick outs for both of these teams. So two up and two down for the Irish here in the top of the third inning. And back to the top of the order we go and Leah Hanks. Uh, Hanks is 0 for 1, became the first strikeout victim of Jayla Wright to begin the game at the top of the first inning. Last year, Hanks in 2022 named second team all ACC in the outfield, started all 52 games in left field. And last year hit 370 for the year. The 1 Yeah, Leah Hanks, such a huge part of this team, huge part of this program. What's been so impressive to me this weekend is her ability to make adjustments each at bat. I can't tell you how many times this weekend it's that first at bat, she, she looks out match, she strikes out on three pitches, but then as the game goes on, a double, a single. Off speed pitch, and that is in there for strike one, two balls and one strike. Yeah, Hanks, uh, we, we talked with coach uh, Deanna Gump before the game, and she says Hanks brings a good left-handed stick to this lineup, good speed, could hit the ball well, could do it all. And she says she brings a real calming presence to this team. She really likes that about her. Yeah, you can sense that from Hanks. Another aspect of her game that's so impressive is oftentimes she will swing away. She has a ton of power. But if you look at this Duke defense, Anna Gold is playing about three or four steps in front of third base, which opens it up, those opportunities to shoot the ball through the left side because Leah Hanks can and sometimes will put that ball down right in front of the, the defense. Hit deep to center, back goes Jennings, has room, makes the catch, and the inning is over. Notre Dame goes down one, two, three in the third inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. But Back in Durham, bottom of the third inning, leading off is Francesca Freelich. And on Friday night, Rain, she had one heck of a catch in foul grounds in the outfield Friday night. Yeah, Francesca Freelich is what we call a utility player, playing catcher today, but right field on Friday night was lights out for Francesca Freelich with a diving catch on the line. She, what an athlete. She leads off the bottom of the third inning for Duke, and she takes a called strike. No balls and one strike to Freelich, batting 267 on the year. One home run and three RBIs on the season. 5'5", five five junior from Lexington, Massachusetts. Facing Peyton Tidd in the circle in her third inning of work, starting pitcher today for Notre Dame. And that's upstairs, one ball, one strike. Freelick is 0 for 5 so far in the series. Last year as a sophomore, 38 games played, 21 starts behind the plate. Hit 313 last year, made the ACC honor roll as well. One one. Hit one high and deep, and it's hooking foul. It is over the wall, but out of play for a long strike two. Yeah, Freelich just a little early on this one. Had the distance, but pretty early on knew it was going to be foul. Freelich comes from a, a very athletic family. Her brother, seventh overall pick to the Milwaukee Brewers as an outfielder, Sal Freelich. We, we would watch him play at Boston College back when I was her teammate. The one, two, upstairs. Yeah, and her, uh, her dad, Jeff, played football at Pittsburgh back in the day in the uh, mid-80s, 1983 to 1987. So yeah, a very uh, athletic family. Besides yourself, did you come from an athletic family? 
They're going to hate me for saying this, but no. <laughs> My mom loves sports, huge sports fan. We watched the Duke UNC basketball game last night. My dad had no idea what was going on the entire time. <laughs> He was actually talking to the patron next to us about knitting while the Duke UNC game was at 30 seconds left. <laughs> My mom and I hanging on every single play. And it's not like it was a blowout either. No. There is one high and deep again, hooking foul again. And uh, Francesca Freelich getting, a, getting her money's worth at the plate here, getting some good cuts in there too. Foul ball strikes that have cleared the wall, but not in play. And it's a full count, three balls and two strikes with nobody on and nobody out here in the beginning of the bottom of the third inning. The 3-2 from Ted popped up and that's playable. The shortstop in foul grounds, Lexi Orozco makes the catch and there's one out in the Duke third inning. And that's what Tid does so well. She does not give in, rarely gives up free passes. Freelick on time most of the at bat, but Tid wins that duel between the two. Now batting is the number eight hitter, the shortstop Jada Baker. A batting 281 through 17 games, all starts, no home runs and two RBIs in the air. The pitch from Tid. Inside and tight. One ball, no strikes to Jada Baker. 5-4, redshirt freshman from Longwood, Florida. For the series, she is two for four. And she has scored a run. The 1-0. Inside called strike. Talked to Marissa Young before the series began, head coach of Duke. We asked her what she likes best about her team so far this year. And she says she likes how deep this team is this year. Every player got to play in the games against North Carolina Central here on Wednesday in the doubleheader. And she says this program is all about building a good culture. She told her team that everyone on this team is here for a reason. There's a fly ball, hit to left. Winchell is there, makes the catch, and that's out number two in the inning. What impresses you most about this Duke team this year. You know, the storyline I think going into this season was how much they're losing. They lose a couple assistant coaches. They lose a couple All-Americans in Peyton St. George, Jamison Cable. They lose a handful of other really good players to graduation and transfers. So for me to see how good they've been early on after losing all that power last season, Jamison Cable, Christina Foreman, Caroline Jacobson, Rachel Crabtree, to see how competitive they've been just shows the maturity and the talent and the skill of this young Duke softball team. Yeah, 17 home runs for Jamison Cable last year. You look at that and you think, if you're a softball fan, you think, wow, they, there's no way they can be as good this year. But so far, they have been so impressive in such different ways. Sarah Goddard is the batter, the number nine hitter for Duke, batting 297, one home runs, and a one home run and 10 RBIs in the year. 5'9 junior from Carmel, Indiana. Uh, for the series coming into today, 0 for 2. She has scored a run. She has struck out once, hit by pitch once. Those were all in yesterday's Saturday game only. Did not play in Friday's game. Getting some playing time, starting in the number nine spot at right field for Duke here this afternoon. The 0-2, just off the plate for ball one. Yeah, Goddard is a player at her best is yet to come. She is so good, so calm, so poised. And one of the players on this Duke team that works so incredibly hard day after day is committed to the process, committed to the culture of this team. And such a good teammate. And that's off the hands of the bat foul, back to the screen, back to the net. Still one ball, two strikes. Peyton Tidd, winning pitcher on Friday. And starting here today, the ace for Notre Dame. On, 
Nobody on and two outs and there is no score. Tids one, two, and that's off the hands of the bat again. Well, she's really working the inside part of the plate. Yeah, she works really well inside and up. And what makes that pitch so effective is she can also pull the string on the outside half with a changeup. So as a hitter, you're trying to defend both extremes. You're trying to defend low and away slow and up and in fast. And Tid is able to locate both of those pitches so well, she's not going to miss over the middle of the plate. Trying to make her chase up and away. And Goddard wouldn't bite on it. Count even up, two balls and two strikes. No score, two outs in the inning. Bottom of the third, Duke and Notre Dame. Third and final game of the three-game weekend set. Each team has won one game here this weekend so far. This is the rubber game. This is the 2-2 pitch. Swung on, high fly ball, hit deep to left field. It is oh! Oh. out of here, a home wow. run. Just barely cleared the top of the wall. Home run for Sarah Goddard, her second of the year. RBI number 11, and Duke strikes first, one to nothing in the third inning. Wow, Sarah Goddard just mentioned how Tid will not miss over the middle of the plate. She does there, and Goddard makes her pay. Shoots that ball to left center field. I thought for a second Winchell caught the ball. But just out of the reach of the left fielder, Sarah Goddard puts the team on her back and puts this Duke team up one to zero. Yeah, in live action, I thought for a second that Winchell, just like you, I thought she might have caught it at the top of the wall. Instead, it goes over the wall. It's gone, and we have our first run of the game, one nothing Duke. And that just shows you the number nine hitter in this Duke lineup. If you're going to miss over the middle of the plate at this level, these hitters will make you pay. And now you have to jump back and face Deja Davis, the All-American. Davis takes ball one, one ball, no strikes. Uh, 0 for 1 of the game. She popped up to third base in the first inning. one -oh pitch, and that's a whacked foul back this way. Count even up, one ball and one strike. So Davis at the plate. Her cousin, uh, Jeanette Lawrence, was a member of the Duke rowing program back in the day, 2012 to 2016. In this cat and mouse game we see between Tid and Deja Davis, all of these players, all of these hitters are going back to the hotel at night and seeing what they've been pitched. So on game three of the weekend, you kind of have an idea of how they're going to try to attack you. But also, these pitching staffs are going to mix that up because they know that you know how you've been attacking them the whole weekend. Davis has two doubles in this series, three hits, two runs scored, and two RBIs. And last year, she was named Duke's 2021-22 Female Student Athlete of the Year. Yeah, Deja Davis talked about a bit about this Friday and yesterday, but a really fantastic softball player, but folks, an even better human being. She's a great student, great teammate, great role model for any young people watching this one. Tids 2-2, and that's fouled away. Yeah, Coach uh, Marissa Young said of Davis, uh, she also is one of those calming players to this group, has a calming demeanor on the field, has the right kind of experience and poise, she says, to lead this Duke team this year. Grad student, 5'6", from Cerritos, California. She's a long way from home. Yeah. Two, two, they... Appeal, and yes, she went around for strike three, and the inning is over. But not before Sarah Goddard takes the ball deep to left center field and gives this Duke team a lead. Tid misses over the middle. Goddard makes her pay and shoots this ball to give Duke the 1 0 lead. Back in Durham, top of the fourth inning we go. 1-0 Duke as Duke got a home run 
in the bottom of the third inning. And the two, three, four hitters up there for Notre Dame. And Kloss hits one to short. It is not fielded cleanly by Baker, and she is safe. Yeah, Kloss making things happen. I think even if that's fielded cleanly, it's a close play at one. Of course, you ask Jada Baker. She wants to make that play. The short hop just gets her on the hands, unable to field it cleanly. But again, that's what Kloss does. That's why she's so good in that two hole. She makes things happen. She makes the defenses work. And she hands the bat to Karina Gaskins. So Gaskins at the plate. Uh, she is 0 for 1 as she went down swinging on strikes against Jayla Wright in the first inning. Uh, Gaskins, preseason all ACC selection this year, named the ACC Player of the Year and first team all ACC last season. Has a couple of hits in the series. 5'10 junior from Edison, New Jersey. She's a great hitter, according to coach Deanna Gumpf. Can hit for power. Good team player, has a good eye at the plate, she says. Says she's a team first kind of player for this program. That one's hit deep to center field. Jennings is back there, makes the catch at the warning track. And that's one out of the inning. Yeah, an out for Gaskins there, but a shot into right center field. So much power off her bat. Every time you kind of have to hold your breath because every ball she hits has a chance to get out of the park. But give credit to Jennings, credit to Wright for attacking the zone. Jennings with a lot of speed out there in center, able to make the play, get the first out for this Duke team. Here's Lexi Orozco with a runner on and one out of the inning. Uh, by the way, they called that uh, First uh, batter, Kloss, is on by an E6, they say. It took a while to put it on the scoreboard, but uh, E6 is why Kloss is at first base. One on one out for Orozco. No balls, one strike the count. She's 0 for 1 in the game. She went down on strikes, swinging in the first inning. And time is called. Talk to Notre Dame head coach Deanna Gumpf before the game. We asked her about her team this year, and she likes the fact this team has found different ways to win games, both at the plate with its pitching and its defense. She says when her team does two things well in a game, her team wins. When her team doesn't do two things well in a game, her team loses. Absolutely. And I think you can say that for a lot of teams across the country. Anytime you really master, whether it's in the circle and hitting or in the circle and defensively, and if you get all three one day, that's fantastic. But that's really not how this game usually plan pans out. It's the teams throughout the year that consistently are good at two aspects of the game that win more. There's Coach Gumpf coaching at third base. Uh, 13 seasons of 40 or more wins in a year, that's just incredible. 20 consecutive NCAA regionals, not counting the 2020 COVID year. Over 800 career wins. Just an outstanding career at Notre Dame. And Notre Dame's had great coaches in all sports. You have Mike Bray, men's basketball at Notre Dame. Of course, Coach Gumpf here for the softball program. Muffet McGraw, the head women's basketball coach, who had an outstanding career there at Notre Dame. There's a swing and a miss for strike three. Down goes Orozco, second out of the inning. It is strikeout number five of the game for Wright. One on and two outs in the inning. Yeah, Jayla right here is going to work up in the zone versus Orozco. She's going to try to fight it off, but just out of the reach. A huge out there for Jayla Wright. Orozco, a powerful hitter, has been hot all weekend. One on, two out. Little slowly rolled ball to Vega. Easy throw to first base, and the inning is over. Notre Dame threatens, but does off ball stadium. Family and friends out here. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. One nothing Duke over Notre Dame. Rock bowling, Rain Wilson, former Duke softball standout, bringing you ACC softball action here this afternoon. 
here on a Sunday. Coming up to the plate for Duke, the two, three, four hitters, Jennings, Tapia, and Gold. And there's a slap hit up the middle for a base hit for Deanna Jennings on the first pitch that she sees, and she leads off the fourth inning with a single. Yeah, Jennings are really aggressive early in the count, doing what she does best, chopping the ball into the ground, perfect positioning up the middle. Roseco is shaded towards third base. No chance on that one. And that, oh, that's how Duke likes to start. Of course, you want to get your lead off on. But this is how they draw it up. You get your speed on first, you move them over, and then you get them in with your power hitters and Giselle Tapia and Anna Gold. Might be a good opportunity for Duke to put a bunt down here. They love to do that. Up and away, ball one to Giselle Tapia, the first baseman. She is 0 for 1, went down on strikes, swinging in the first inning. Duke, one run on three hits, one error. Notre Dame, zeros across the scoreboard here this afternoon as we are in the fourth inning. That one is hit deep to center field. Hanks goes back and has room, makes the catch, and that is out number one in the inning. Yeah, solid contact there by Giselle Tapia. The ball just kind of hanging up in the air today. Goddard able to get one out, but Gaskin's last inning kind of hanging up there just long enough to where the, these outfielders can get under it. Hanks so solid out there in center field. A quick out there for Notre Dame. Just what you want as a response to the leadoff single. This ought to be a good matchup here for the second time of the game. It's the power pitching of Peyton Tidd against the power hitting of Anna Gold. Of course, Gold, we talked about it in the open. Two home runs hit yesterday. Coach Marissa Young says she can hit for power. She can hit to the gaps, been increasing her average. Can hit it deep, obviously. She says off the field gold is the life of the party. She's goofy, her teammates love her. Comes from a big baseball, softball family. Says the game is in her blood. And she fouls it away down the right side for a strike. Yeah, gold just an all around fantastic softball player. Defensively so good at third base. I think if you took nine on a gold versus any team in the country, you'd be very competitive. Gold so hot this weekend, especially yesterday. Notre Dame's gonna have to be careful with her. One, one. Ripped, foul, look out. Almost took out Coach Young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When gold comes up, I swear I watch Coach Young take about 15 steps backwards almost every time. One of the most, one of the strongest players on this Duke team in the weight room. So much power in her bat, but so much speed as well. The one, two. Called strike three, pulled the string on her. Out number two in the inning, caught looking on strikes is gold. Strikeout number three in the game for Peyton Tidd. There's a really good pitch here by Tidd, working inside. Gold says, no, that's way too far in. Umpire says, nope, caught the corner. Tidd with a strikeout to for there, for Anna Gold. Such a massive pitch. And if you're going to get that call, why not continue to go back to it? Runner goes, throw down his second base, close play, and they got her on the tag. Caught stealing is Jennings, and the inning is over. Right, has been solid in the circle here this afternoon for Duke. Yeah, working in, out, up, down, using the changeup really effectively to keep these Notre Dame hitters off balance. She has been dynamite for this Duke softball team early on today. And can't forget about Sarah Goddard making Peyton pay with the mistake over the middle, shooting this ball to left center field and giving her team the 1-0 lead in a really tight ball game. Here's a look at the uh, game track so far. One run, three hits, one error for Duke. Zeros across the board for Notre Dame. Third and final game of this weekend series. Each team trying to get out to a good start in ACC play, trying to win this series two games to one. Who will it be, Notre Dame or Duke? Right now, Duke with the advantage here in game three. Up one nothing. 
Yeah, Notre Dame back-to-back -back games with zero hits in the first three innings. But the thing about this team, the thing about this program for Notre Dame is they're so good as the game goes on and their ability to adjust. Lined and caught by the second baseman, Amina Vega. Tid lines out to second base, out number one in the inning. But credit to Jayla Wright. She's just pitched so well early on. Only 46 pitches here in the top of the fifth. No sign of stopping. But like both of these pitchers, Tid and Wright, these offenses watch video every single night of the series, trying to prepare for them. Jolie Mitchell and whiffs at an off-speed pitch, a nasty pitch from Wright. No balls and one strike. And Mitchell is 0 for 1, a ground out to second base in the second inning. Came into the series 1 for 6 with two RBIs, or came into today, I should say, for the series 1 for 6, two RBIs and one strikeout. And takes a called strike on the corner, so Wright continues to work, like you said, left, right, up, down, in, out. She's Absolutely. been all over the place. Yeah, and Coach Mercy Young's such a good pitch caller in the dugout has all the information right in front of her about these hitters' tendencies, how they've gotten them out in, in the past games. But what's been really impressive is Jayla Wright's ability to locate. You know, you can call an outside pitch or an inside pitch or a changeup all day long, but if your pitcher can't execute, and not only has Jayla Wright executed on the sides of the plate, but she's almost put a pinpoint exactly where she wants the ball. And any time a pitcher at this level can do that, especially with the stuff that Jayla Wright has, it's incredibly difficult for these offenses to get momentum. One, two. Little chopper chasing it, coming in gold. Quick throw, close play. Got her in time, five to three, out number two in the inning. Well, Jayla Wright has allowed just two base runners so far on the day. A walk in the first inning, and her team Give up an error in the fourth. Yeah, Anna Gold making that play look smooth as butter. I promise, folks at home, it is not that easy. She's just that good. Nobody on, two outs for Rachel Allen here in the fifth, and got a piece of that one foul of the plate for strike one. Allen is 0 for 1, became the fourth strikeout victim of Jayla Wright in the third inning. The 0 1. Beautiful off speed pitch. That was a nasty changeup. Yeah, Wright working that off speed more and more as we get later into this game, keeping these hitters off balance. She's smiling in between pitches. You can feel her energy. She's really confident right now in the circle for good reason. The 0-2. Called strike three right on the corner. And the inning is over. GR in the bottom of the fifth. Duke is up 1-0. They're separated by one point. The preseason poll, they're separated by one run here on Sunday. At the plate for the Blue Devils, five, six, seven hitters, Davidson, Vega, and Freelick facing Peyton Tidd. And a big swing and a miss from Davidson. No balls and one strike. A Davison one for one. Got the first hit of the game for either team. A single to right in the second inning off of Peyton Tidd. You can tell these lefties on this Duke offense are attacking that outside pitch. That one just off the plate a little bit. Strike two. It's a little too far to do any damage. But as, a, as an offense, if you are looking aside of the plate, even if that ball is a little bit far off, it still gives you a better opportunity if you get the pitch that you're looking for to do some damage with it. And Davidson's so good at shooting the balls to the left side. Upstairs, one ball, two strikes. Uh, Davidson is a two-way player for this Duke team. She was the losing pitcher on Friday. Went three and two-thirds, allowed four runs on four hits, threw 63 pitches for the series so far, including today. Uh, Davidson is two for seven in the weekend. One, two. And that's outside. Can't be understated how difficult it is in today's game to be a two-way player. You know, we see the matchup between Tid, who is two ways, and Claire Davidson. 
it takes so much work, so many hours to hone your craft as a pitcher, but to also be really competitive and one of the best bats in your lineup as a hitter, it just shows how talented both these athletes are. 2-2. Foul tipped into the glove for strike three. Out number one in the inning, strikeout number four in the game for right-hander Peyton Tidd. Yeah, Tidd gonna keep with what's working, working outside of these lefties. Great movement. Up in the zone, off the plate, gets the strikeout. For the first out of the inning. One up and one down in the Duke bottom of the fifth. Amina Vega now the batter. Newcomer to the team, freshman. We talked about her in her last at bat as she lifts one high and fairly deep to the left at the wall. It is caught up against the wall by Mickey Winchell, the left fielder, and that's the second out of the inning. Yeah, again, this, these lefties looking for that outside pitch. Vega just under this one, but credit to Winchell. Finding the wall, a short 190 fence, finds the wall, makes the play. Textbook outfield play there. Just a few feet shy of a home run for Vega. If the wind was blowing out, I think any bit, that would have been a home run. Definitely a hitter's ballpark down the left and right field lines, 190. That's uh, twice that Mickey Winchell's had to fight the sun and a deep fly ball to the left. Almost made a catch in the early part of the game in the third inning and made one right at the wall on that last out. 1-0 pitch to Francesca Freelich. She is 0 for 1 with a pop up to short back in the third inning. Yeah, right now, umpire giving a little bit more inside on both, on, for both sides, working on that inside part of the plate. I think if you're Tid or Jayla right, you're staying there. If he's going to give you that call just inside. That is ripped a ton and foul. Look out. Yeah, Freelick would have a couple home runs if we just moved the field about 30 yards to the left. But that's what you want if you're Tid. Jam them in. Get if, if a hitter's going to wrap around, give you foul balls, give you strikes, you're going to take that all day long. You see Freelick actually comes off the plate a little bit here. Try to make her chase outside the zone, and that's outside for ball two. Yeah, really good spot there by Tid. See what you can get on the outside part of the plate. That ball over the chalk. But again, if you're a young pitcher out there, a young catcher, Oftentimes, if you can hit the glove in the middle of your catcher's body, the umpire will give you that call. Tid rocks and fires to two, and that's popped up and out of play. Worked to the inside of the plate, jammed her in on the hands. Still two and two. Yeah, Tid so effective on both sides of the plate. I think what makes her so special, though, is her ability to elevate at a level that these hitters can't get on top of. Give her defense easy outs. The 2-2. And that hit the bat. I thought for a moment it hit her on the hand. That would have been a hit by pitch had it hit her, but instead it hit the, I think, the barrel of the bat, or the, uh, the handle. I think her barrel just swung around. I'm sure they're discussing, what do we want to throw Freelick? Yeah, just tips the barrel there. Frank, Francesca probably thinking, man, that's ball three. Of course, if you're Tid, if you're Notre Dame, you want to potentially work up and in again, but she's proven over and over again that she can barrel that ball. Of course, it's been foul, but if she can get the barrel out on that pitch, it might be a home run. But you run the risk if you work outside or the outer part of the plate for her to shoot one to the right center gap. 2-2, opposite field, right fielder Cronenberger is there, makes the catch, and the inning is over as Duke goes down 1-2-3 in the fifth inning after five complete, one nothing. Back in Durham, North Carolina, we go to the top of the sixth inning. one nothing Duke over the Fighting Irish. New pitcher into the game for the Blue Devils. It's left-hander 
Number 19, Cassidy Kurd. She was the winning pitcher yesterday for the Devils. She went five innings, allowed two runs on four hits, two walks, five strikeouts through 90 pitches. And you were here yesterday, Rain. What impressed you the most yesterday about this pitcher new in the game for uh, Duke, Cassidy Kurt. Yeah, Cassidy yesterday was so successful at attacking the zone early in the count. She struck out the first four batters. She's going to work the fastball to the upper 70 or upper 60s to 70. Good rise, a fastball in and out. Really mix it up. It's an interesting call here, but that's why Coach Young is Coach Young. She gets paid the big bucks for a reason. And Kurt is a really, really good player for this team. So we'll see how this matchup unfolds. And she can bring the heat. You saw the scouting report on her. Throws between 66 and 70 miles an hour. She's been polishing her mechanics. Has a good fastball, good curve ball. She's been developing a rise ball. 5'7 freshman from Port St. Lucie, Florida. Winning pitcher yesterday, trying to get the save here today. A 1-0 lead for Duke in the top of the sixth. And Winchell goes down on that swing, and she's down in the count, no balls and two strikes. I love watching Cassidy Kurt engage her infield, engage her catcher. You'll see her after every single pitch nodding to the catcher, nodding to Francesca Freelich. The 0-2 pitch, way upstairs and outside for ball one. A windshield of the plate is 0-for-1. She grounded out to first base unassisted in the third inning. One run, three hits, and one error for Duke. Zeros across the board in the outfield for Notre Dame. There's a look at Jayla Wright's numbers. Five innings pitched, 53 pitches thrown, six strikeouts, one walk, no runs, no hits for Jayla Wright here this afternoon. Yeah, what a job by the veteran for that Duke softball pitching staff. Jayla Wright was so fantastic all day today. Filled up the zone with strikes. Only 53 pitches through five innings. That's called efficiency right there, folks. No hits given up. And I'm sure she's going to stay warm. She could potentially come back into this game if need be for this Duke team. 2-2. Two -two. Lined in. There's a base hit to center field. That is the first hit of the day for Notre Dame in this game this afternoon. And that breaks up the no-hitter by Duke pitching. Yeah, just a solid piece of hitting there by Winchell. Kurd misses a little, missing a little bit over the plate. Winchell making her pay, shooting that ball up the middle. Now you, now you face the leadoff, now you face Hanks. And it's not their first time seeing you anymore, so you kind of have to change up your approach if you're Cassidy Kurd in this Duke offense, or Duke defense. Here's Leah Hanks at the plate. Tying run is aboard, takes a called strike. Uh, prior to this weekend, coming into the weekend series here this week, Duke had won 12 consecutive games and had seven consecutive shutout wins, outscoring opponents 57 to nothing in those wins. Losing on Friday, five to four, winning yesterday did Duke six to two, and now up in the third game here today, one nothing in the top of the sixth inning. And there you see the winning streak uh, overall in 12 games from February 17th to March 1st. You see dominating opponents on the scoreboard, three top 25 wins, seven straight shutouts. It's been a very consistent season for Duke this year. The 0-2 to Leah Hanks. High heater, got her, swing and a miss for strike three. That is out number one in the inning. That is strikeout number seven in the game for Duke pitching the first for Cassidy Kerr. Absolutely fantastic pitch here by Kerr. Going to work up and out of the zone. Hanks just trying to put something on the ground. Cannot hold back. And that's what make Kurt, makes Kerr so good. That rise ball. This just looks good enough. And for folks that are watching at home, you think, why would she swing at that? That was way far out of the zone. That is the rise ball. And we've all come victim, been a victim of swinging at that pitch. Carly Kloss takes a called strike, nothing in one. Kloss is 0 for 1 with a walk, reshot an error in the fourth inning. 
This Notre Dame team, 11 and five this year, one and one in the ACC. Last year, Notre Dame, 40 wins, just 12 defeats, win 16 and five in the ACC. And last year, Notre Dame lost twice to McNeese State in the Evanston, Illinois Regional. Uh, this team hit 49 home runs last year. 42 of those 49 home runs that were hit from last year were from players who returned for this season. Yeah, Notre Dame was just a fantastic year last year. A sad ending for that program last year, but looking to return this year and do even better. One on, one out, one nothing game in favor of Duke. Carly Kloss the batter. Two balls and one strike. A beautiful day for softball here in Durham, North Carolina. Campus of Duke University, Duke Softball Stadium. Here is the 2-1. Right down the middle, called strike. 64 miles an hour on that pitch, and the count is even up at two and two. Yeah, Courage is attacking here, and that's what you want from your freshman pitcher. You don't want to give any free passes. You want her to attack these hitters, see what happens, have a defense play behind you. And evens up the count. 2-2 two -two pitch. And got up in the zone. Fighting it off, foul grounds to the opposite way is Kloss. And the count remains at two balls and two strikes. one nothing game. Pitcher's duel here in Durham, North Carolina. This is such a huge moment in this matchup here. Kloss is able to find her way on. You pass the bat to Gaskins, who hit a home run off Kurd yesterday. The 2-2. Two -two. Up and away, full count. And if you're Carly Kloss for Notre Dame, what, what can you expect to see here on this next pitch? Something hard, something hard, probably working away from her lefty on lefty matchup. That's such a hard thing for lefty hitters to face. The lefty on lefty fastball working outside. I'm sure Coach Young is asking her, hey, what feels good right now? What do you want to throw? Because the last thing you want to happen is to give her a free pass. Kloss, not a home run threat, pretend, or you know, particularly. So you don't want to give her the base especially with Gaskins right behind her. You really need to get this out. Notre Dame could potentially put the runner in motion. A lot of speed over there at first base. A ball in the gap would then score her potentially. A huge moment in this matchup, a huge moment in this series. What will Kurd throw here? Three balls, two strikes, the pitch, and that's back to the screen. You saw Coach, Coach Young talking to Cassidy Kerr. To Coach Young, quite the pitcher back in the day. Coach Young played at Michigan for four years, 2000 through 2003. Named the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year in 2002. Named the Big Ten Player of the Year in 2003. That's uh, having some good back-to-back -back seasons. Yeah, she's still a really good pitcher. She'll sometimes pitch live, and it's always uh, humbling when she strikes you out at practice. That means you got to listen to her, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and she can hit, and she can play defense. It's a humbling experience when your head coach, who's 20 years out of playing, can strike you out, field better than you, and sometimes hit better than you. <laughs> who's going to give in here? Three, two pitch, call strike three, right in the corner inside half of the plate. And that's out number two in the inning and strikeout number eight in the game by Duke pitching. What a massive pitch here by Cassidy Kurd. Says I'm gonna throw this fastball right down the middle, knee high. Francesca Freelich with the frame. That can't be understated how good of a frame that was. I think it caught the strike zone no matter what, but to make it look that good for the umpire, that's just a fantastic job. Kloss trying to sell it there as ball four. 
but the umpire ringing her up. Such a massive out for Cassidy Curd in this Duke defense. Here's Katrina, or uh, Karina Gaskins, and Gaskins takes ball one. Now Gaskins in the game 0 for 2, strike out of the first inning and a fly out to center in the fourth. Coming up, coming up for the third time to the plate in this game. Yeah, I think you got to be really careful with Gaskins here. You know, her fly out in the book was a shot to right center field where she hit the home run yesterday. That's on the corner for a called strike. And we uh, talked about it uh, earlier in the game. Karina Gaskins, ACC Player of the Year last year, named first team all ACC as well. Led the Irish with a 428 batting average. Yeah, she was fantastic for this program last year in a conference that was loaded with talent. So for her to be the ACC Player of the Year, it speaks volumes to the kind of hitter she is. Yeah, dangerous hitter, preseason all ACC selection. And right now she's down in the count one and two. It is power versus power right here. The hard throwing left hander Cassidy Curd in the circle against the strong right handed hitting bat of Karina Gaskins at the plate. One on and two outs. One nothing Duke of the one two pitch. Pops it up, should in the inning. Kurt is there, makes the catch, and the inning is over. Notre Dame threatens in the sixth inning, but nobody comes across. Five and a half in the books. One in and scored in this game, a home run in the third inning. And then to the top of the order, Deja Davis. So Kelly Zampa at the plate. 5'8 sophomore from Heartland, Michigan. Swings in the first pitch and drives it foul for strike one. Yeah, Zampa will run for, for this Duke team a lot. But a player that was highly touted out of high school is such a good hitter for this Duke team. It just speaks volumes to the depth that they've had that she's pinch hitting here in the sixth. Oh, one pitch and fights that one off. Shallow left. Oh, over the shoulder grab made by the shortstop Leslie Orozco and that's out number one in the inning that was a nice play that was a really nice player by Orozco sort of in no man's land gets a good jump fighting the sun but the 6-1 frame of Orozco able to make the catch get that coveted first out of the inning if you're Duke here of course you're trying to score but just one run sends such a message takes the momentum on your side would be huge for this Duke offense and the difference of the game is at the plate in Sarah Goddard hit a solo home run for the only run of the game so far. That was back in the third inning. This is only her second time up to the plate here this afternoon. Yeah, Goddard, the difference so far. She really, the, I, I think that was the only mistake I've seen Tid make all game long was leaving that pitch over the middle and Goddard making her pay. High strike on the letters, inside corner for strike one. Count even up, one ball, one strike. Nobody on, one out, one run game. Duke leads it one nothing in a big pitcher's duel here this afternoon. Yeah, pretty uncharacteristic for game three of a series. You typically think the hitters will have caught up. It'll be a scoring duel. Hits it again, deep, but hooks it foul. And it's strike two. But both of the pitchers on both sides, Jayla Wright, Peyton Tidd, coming out, working the off speed so much. Tidd using the different levels. She's just so good. And she will continue to be a huge piece of this Notre Dame program this season. One, two, pops it up, and that is foul. Out of play, still one and two. This is a Duke team. This year, coming into today, 16 and four overall, one and one in the ACC. Last year, Duke, an outstanding season, 44 wins, just 11 defeats. 44 and 11 record, 19 and three in the ACC, good enough for second place, made it to an NCAA regional, and lost twice in the regional to UCLA. The one, two, called strike three, right in the inside corner. Out number two in the inning. Strikeout number five of the game for Peyton Tidd. And there are two up and two down in the Duke sixth. Number 16, Deja Davis. 
Yeah, Tid just showing there why she's the veteran. She goes back to that inside pitch, gets the call, got her new right away. You got to defend that at least. But she's also the only person who scored for this Duke team. Here's Deja Davis and takes a called strike. Nothing in one to Davis. She is 0 for 2, a pop up to third and a strikeout as well. Yeah, talking about last year's season for this Duke team, Deja Davis, a huge part of that. A massive moment for this Duke softball program to go to a super regional and play UCLA, winning the regional here in Durham for the first time. And only their fifth season of existence led by Coach Young. It's so impressive what she's been able to do. The one one. Slowly hit to second, charging is Marquez. Quick throw, got her in time, 4-3. And that is out, number three. Back in Durham, and here's a look at the Duke pitching staff so far through the weekend. And Rain, it's only scattered out 12 hits, just one here today, 23 strikeouts for the weekend. Yeah, the Duke pitching staff has gotten better each and every single game. They give up five runs on Friday, two yesterday, and zero today so far with only one hit being given up today. They've been really impressive, led by Coach Young and Nicole Schaefer. The four, five, six hitters coming up there for Notre Dame. It's Orozco, Cronenberger, and Tid, and Orozco takes a called strike. Orozco for the day. She is 0 for 2. She has struck out twice, both to starting pitcher Jayla Wright. Orozco talked to Coach Gump before the game. Says her work ethic is off the charts good. Always the first one to practice on the field, always the last one to leave. Great leader for this team, the 0-1. Strike two. Yeah, Orozco asked after that first pitch, you know, is that the edge of the plate there? I think she thought that first one was a ball. That second pitch, maybe even a little bit further outside. But Curd gets the call. If you're Curd here, if you're this Duke coaches, you're staying there. In fact, you might even be able to expand a bit more. You can see Orozco has put her toe on the line. Not going to let the umpire take the bat out of her hands. The 0-2 from Curd and lifted to pretty deep and right. Goddard at the track fighting the sun makes the grab. And that's out number one in the inning. Really well done there by Curd, staying outside. Goddard finding the wall, making the play. Any first, again, we talked about it all game, but any first out of the inning is huge, but especially in the seventh against this Notre Dame team in a tight ball game, that first out really gives your defense, you don't relax, but you kind of can sit back in and you know you have a bit of momentum. Here's Jane Cronenberger. She is 0 for 9 for the series, including 0 for 2 today. Takes a called strike. She has grounded out twice today to shortstop in the second to second base in the fourth. 5'9 sophomore from Cincinnati. Last year named second team all ACC, named to the ACC all freshman team as well. Yeah, Cronenberger hasn't hit her stride this series, but such a good player for this Notre Dame team. So much power. Look for her throughout the season. Will be a huge part of this Notre Dame offense. Was a huge part of it last year as well. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Little two bouncer to third, booted by Gold, and Cronenberger is safe. That'll be an E5 on on a goal, just uh, couldn't quite field it cleanly, and the tying run is aboard for Notre Dame in the top of the seventh. Yeah, if you're Notre Dame, it's exactly what you want. Just takes a bad hop off gold. As the game goes on, as the sun shines, this infield gets a little bit harder. The hops become a little less predictable. I'm sure if you ask gold, she'll tell you that. Hey, I should have had that routine. But if you're Notre Dame, that's how rallies are started. 
So the tying run is aboard with Cronenberger at first. one nothing Duke here in the top of the seventh. Peyton Tidd, the pitcher, is the batter. Pitcher versus pitcher right here. And there's a called strike to Tidd as she is 0 for 2 in the game. She is 0 for 7 as a hitter this weekend. She's been hit by pitch twice. Today she is 0 for 2 with a ground out to third base in the second and a line out to second in the fifth inning. Here's the 0-1 pitch outside. Count even up, one ball, one strike. You know, of course, it comes down to the wire. We expect nothing less in this series. Going back to when I wore a Duke uniform, every single time we played Notre Dame, it was tight. No matter the record, no matter the talent on either side. Swing and a miss at a high fastball. It's strike two. So Cassidy Curd in her second inning of work in relief of Jayla Wright. Trying to get the save, trying to... Close down the door on Notre Dame on this third and final game, the rubber game of the series. Series tied at one game apiece as Notre Dame won on Friday, Duke won Saturday. Here we are, a one-run game in the seventh on Sunday afternoon. The one-two pitch. Got a piece of it and wax it foul back to the net. Kurd's composure as a freshman has been so impressive this season, but I think I look back at the Arkansas victory a defeat number four, Arkansas. Curd was in control almost all of the game. She was taken out, I believe, in the fifth inning, but still her, her composure, every single pitch, she's engaging her infielders, engaging Francesca Freelich. She's a lot of fun to watch. The one, two. Downstairs, counting it up, two balls and two strikes. Not a bad location there for Curd. Keeping the ball low in the zone is good because it changes the eye level of the hitter. Now she can work up. Tid, the pitch before, was on time for that up pitch. Now Kurt has options. 2-2. Two -two. Lined up the middle for a base hit. Stopping at second base is Cronenberger. Tid with her first hit of the weekend, a single to center field. The go-ahead run is at first base. Tying run is second, go-ahead run at first. Two on, one out for Jolie Mitchell, the third baseman. And you see the record by Duke in one-run games this season, just one and three on the young season in 2023. Yeah, I think you could point to a lot of different aspects. You can point to luck, potentially, but this is a young team. They're learning, they're maturing, they're growing. And so these one-run games, although you look at that and you think, oh, that's, that's not great, these moments are really good for the development of these young players, the experience of these young players. You know, I know Cassidy Curd, when May comes, having this experience, the pressure, these one-run games will be massive for her confidence. She'll be able to look back and say, okay, against Arkansas, against Notre Dame, it was tight and we prevailed. Looks like we're gonna see Jayla Wright return to the circle. So Jayla Wright started the game, did well through five innings. She will come out, come back into the game, take a quick break. After this, we'll be back on ACC Nightmare Extra. <laughs> Back in Durham, North Carolina. Two on and one out for Notre Dame. New pinch runner into the game for Jane and Cronenberger. It's gonna be Emily Tran at second base. She represents the tying run for Notre Dame here in the seventh inning. Go ahead run is at first and Peyton Tidd. Jayla Wright is back into the game in the circle for Duke. Started the game, went five innings. You see the numbers, gave up no runs, no hits. Walked one, struck out six, only 53 pitches. Back into the game in the circle for Duke. One nothing lead for Duke here in the top of the seventh inning. Two on and one out for Jolie Mitchell at the plate. Swings and that is foul down the third base line for strike one. Mitchell is 0 for 2. Two ground outs. Grounded out to second base in the second, to third base in the fifth. Yeah, I think a really smart move by Coach Young to put Jayla right back in. 
The veteran comes back in, has already pitched really well today, but also she's more of a ground ball pitcher. So at first and second, you give your defense more opportunities to get an out. There's a called strike on the inside corner, and it's nothing in two. There you see Notre Dame base runners just so far today. It was a very scarce through the first six innings. Already two here in inning number seven. Two on, one out, and the two strike pitch, and that's fouled away. All right, so it's 0-2 on Mitchell. She's down in the count. What do you expect here? 0-2 oh, to, to come next from Jayla Wright. If I'm Jayla Wright, I'm probably going to work an off-speed in the dirt or something out of the zone. Don't give her a chance to get the ball in the grass. Looks like they're going to go in. Off-speed in the dirt. That really wasn't a competitive miss. She knows that. It only made it about 36 feet. So I think you could potentially go back to that pitch. The one, two. High fly ball hit deep the left back goes Davidson at the wall and is out of here. A three run shot by Jolie Mitchell. And Notre Dame down one nothing. Scores three in the seventh. It's three to one Irish. Jolie Mitchell, quiet all weekend, but comes up clutch when it matters. Put the gold chain on Jolie Mitchell. What a clutch hit. Jayla Wright gonna try to work outside, but catches too much of the plate. Middle, middle, Jolie Mitchell sends it over the left field fence to give this Notre Dame team the lead when it matters most. Forget the base runners in the first six innings. Jolie Mitchell puts the team on her back, puts the gold chain on her neck, and Notre Dame takes the lead. Jolie Mitchell came into the game batting 186 for the year with no homers and only three RBIs in the season. She just hit her first home run and drove in three on the shot to give her now six RBIs on the year, three on one swing, her first homer, and on one swing of the bat, Notre Dame takes a two-run lead up three to one in the seventh. Yeah, for young hitters watching, it doesn't matter how you start, it matters how you finish. And the batter, Rachel Allen, she is 0 for 2. Struck out twice to Jayla Wright in the game. Once swinging in the third, caught looking in the fifth. Still only one out for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. 1-1. One, one. That's inside and tight. Such a momentum swing away from this Duke team. Wright was still very poised, but no, she made a mistake there, letting the ball over the middle of the plate. Notre Dame making her pay, but still some game left. And the pitch that she hit out of here was a, a one-two pitch. Uh, still down in the count, and it just took an aggressive swing. And uh, yeah. Right place, right time, barrel the bat, and uh, just enough to go over the wall and go. Absolutely. And Mitchell was on time that entire at bat, which is, I believe, why they threw that off speed. But then the fastball just creeped over to the plate. Right back to the circle, right is there, easy toss, and that's two outs in the inning. And that's the bounce back you want if you're Duke just to get that next out, give your team a little bit of energy, a little bit of momentum. Moments like that are just so hard to come back from energy-wise, but Duke will find a way to, to do that emotionally because they still have three outs to work with. Here is Mickey Winchell. She is one for two. Her lone hit was in the sixth inning. Hit a single to center. One for two in the game. When Duke comes up in the bottom of the seventh inning, it'll be the two, three, four hitters up there for the Devils, Jennings, Tapia, and Gold. And time is called as Duke head coach Marissa Young will talk to home plate umpire 
Emerus Addison, and that'll be it for Jayla Wright. In her second stint of this game, new pitcher into the game for Duke. And we'll take a quick break. We'll tell you all about the new pitcher after this on ECC. The new pitcher for Duke. Third one used of the day is left-hander Lily Walker, six-foot junior from Enola, Oklahoma. And she throws uh, between 59 and 62. Yeah, 14 innings on the year. She's really crafty, will mix speeds. Notre Dame hasn't seen her, so she has the art of surprise coming for them. She moves the ball incredibly well. Coming in late to this game, but an intentional move by Coach Marissa Young to give Walker some ACC experience. You know, we talked all weekend about how deep their staff is, how many pitchers they have. We haven't seen Sophie Garner McKinnon this weekend, but all pitchers will continue to play a large role for this Duke team as the season moves on. So Walker in the circle. She had been a middle inning relief pitcher. She's increased her velocity, according to head coach Marissa Young. She throws between 59 and 62 miles an hour. Throws a fastball, drop ball, and a changeup as well. And that's away for ball four, so another runner on for Notre Dame. Yeah, not the start you want if you're Walker, but Again, a really poised pitcher for this Duke defense, this Duke pitching staff. Just trying to get one out here, send her team into the dugout. Where they'll, they'll try to mount the comeback in the bottom of the seventh. Leah Hanks takes a an off-speed pitch outside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Uh, Davis, or making a Hanks, rather, is 0 for 3. She has struck out twice and a fly out to center as well. And there's a called strike. Count even up on Hanks. One ball, one strike. One on, two out. Three runs in. A three-run shot the left field by Jolie Mitchell to give Notre Dame the lead on one swing, and it has a two-run advantage here in the top of the seventh. Runs and hits were hard to come by for Notre Dame through six innings. And then in the seventh, the floodgates just opened up a three-run bomb by Jolie Mitchell for Notre Dame to give the Irish a three to one lead. Uh, three runs on three hits, no errors for the Irish. One run, three hits, two errors by Duke. And hits one to second. Right there is Vega. The first in time, and the inning is over. However, Notre Dame with a three run seventh inning. A three run shot to left field off the bat of Jolie Mitchell. Her first home run of the year. Notre Dame leads it 3 1. A season numbers for Notre Dame came into today 0-3 when trailing after six innings. Well, the team trailed one to nothing after six, and in the top of the seventh inning, the Irish getting a three-run home run to take the lead three to one here in the seventh inning. Now we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Two, three, four hitters up there for Duke. Jennings, Tapia, and Gold facing Peyton Tidd, who's trying to go the distance and get a complete game win. Yeah, Tid been, has been really successful all day today. And, you know, you look at the Notre Dame offense, and they were silent for the first six innings, but Tid kept them with one swing away of changing the game, and that is exactly what they did with Jolie Mitchell with a three-run home run. And now if you're the Duke offense, you just got to find a way on. Jenny's just got to do her best, work somehow to find a way on base, get the team going, get the rally going. There is no swing right now that can make up the difference. Jennings is one for two, had a single ball after last time up at the fourth. Takes a called strike, and it's one ball, two strikes. Jennings might not agree with that one. If I'm Tid, I'm staying there. 
In fact, I might work off further off the plate now. One and two. Jennings knows the umpire is giving a little bit off the plate. She's going to have to fight that one off. So if I'm Tid, I'm going to work even further off the plate. Make Jennings make the mistake. That's outside. Try to make her make that mistake like you talked about, but she didn't bite on it. Two balls and two strikes. And you got to think if, if Duke can get the leadoff hitter on here in the seventh inning, that'll boost some confidence here. Exactly. Down, get that energy two. back. Yeah. Get that energy back a bit. I mean, the home run was just completely energy sucking for this team. That is chopped. Feel about the shortstop. Orozco over to first. Not in time as Jennings beat it. The speedster down the first baseline. And there you go. The leadoff hitter is on. And the tying run comes to the plate with nobody out in the Duke seventh. And that's a freshman acting like a veteran, getting on base. Orozco almost makes the play off her back foot. Jennings just too fast. Gaskins with the stretch but not in time to get the speedy Jennings. And look at the excitement firing up her dugout. Coach Watkins also throwing up her arms. That's exactly what you want. There's a start you need if you're Duke. Here's Giselle Tapia and takes ball one, one ball, no strikes. So Tapia is 0 for 2. A strikeout to Tid in the first inning, flew out to center in the fourth. 3-1 Notre Dame, bottom of the seventh, Duke batting. Tying run at the plate. Runner at first and nobody out. Ball two. Jennings not the tying run. So she's got to be careful. She's an aggressive base runner as it is, but I'm sure the coaching staff's letting her know you are not the winning run, you're not the tying run. Of course you need to score. But smart base running, just missed upstairs. Uh, by the way, Jennings is six of six on solo base attempts this year. So she has the ability to run, has the ability to steal. Six for six on solo base opportunities so far this year. Three and oh the count. Wow, quiet game for the first six innings for the most part has now had some drama at the end. And walked around four straight. The tying runs are on base with Jennings going to second and Tapia over to first base. Winning run is at the plate. An uncharacteristic four pitch walk by Tid. But the patience of Tapia can't be understated. In that situation, you're the third hitter in this lineup. You love scoring runs. Sometimes you can get over aggressive, swing out of your shoes, but the patience there to leave those pitches off the plate and set your team up for success with Anna Gold. And now Duke has a lot of options. They can put the ball on the ground, but then you, you have Gold up. You have your hot hitter up at the plate. So Notre Dame will have to take into consideration that the bunt could go down, but also she's hit a shot in the first inning at the third baseman. And if you're Marissa Young, you couldn't ask for a better start here at the bottom of the seventh inning. The leadoff hitter on, then a four pitch walk, tying runs are on first and second. The potential winning run is at the plate and you have your best hitter this weekend, Anna Gold, the batter, hit two home runs yesterday. Power hitter for this team. Two on, nobody out. Duke down two runs, three to one in the bottom of the seventh inning. Here is Anna Gold. She is 0 for 2 at the plate here today. And swings hard and fouls it away for strike one. Such a massive at bat in this game, obviously. But I think we have to look at, will Gold be patient? Will she get her pitches? Or will she expand out of the zone? which has been her Achilles heel of swinging at balls. What a matchup we have. It's one oh. high and deep to right center. This game is over. A three run game winning walk off home run by Anna Gold and Duke wins it four to three. Anna Gold going, going, going gold with the walk off home run for Duke. What a game, what a series by this team to come back their third walk-off 
win this season in extraordinary fashion against the rival Notre Dame. Four to three, Anna Gold puts the team on her back yet again and gets the victory for the Duke Blue Devils. Incredible comeback win by the Duke Blue Devils. Anna Gold, the hero, the game-winning three-run shot to right center to win it for the Blue Devils. There you see it. Duke Blue Devils now 11 straight ACC series wins. They win the series over Notre Dame. Two Anna, games to one. Anna Gold just taking that pitch over the middle. Peyton Titt knew it right away. The gold, the power, the bat flip. The victory for Duke. Anna Gold with the excitement and the win for Duke and the series win.